The reason I got banned by Lyft is so bad that I couldn't even put it in the title of this video. So I actually got banned for two reasons. The first reason is because someone accused me of harassment of the more intimate nature. And then the second reason is because that same person accused me of locking them in my car, preventing them from getting out. And while there might be some truth to that, the only way to know for sure is to go through the dash cam footage. I'm gonna do it with you so that you can determine whether or not you think this accusation is accurate. So if you missed the last video where I talk about being banned and not knowing why, let's do a quick recap that you can skip by using the chapters feature below. The day I got banned by Lyft, I had just finished working an 18 hour shift with Lyft in just one day. Now, if you think that I'm lying, that you can't work 18 hours, go and watch that video because I break down how you can work more than 12 hours. You can, you can work more than 12 hours, guys. After I worked the 18 hours, when I woke up, I got an email from Lyft saying that I was banned. You got mail. But the crazy part is they never told me why I was being deactivated in that deactivation email. About three days later, after I repeatedly emailed them over and over, they finally got back to me with what the accusation was. And here's what they had to say. This is the email that they sent to me. Hi, Tristan. I am following up on some feedback we received where a member of our community specifically regarding some concerning behavior during one of their recent lift rides. Safety is our top priority and we take these matters very seriously. The report alleges, alleges that you made comments towards your passenger that were sexually suggestive and that you denied the exit to your passenger. Those are some heavy, heavy accusations. So then the email goes on to say, would you be able to provide more details about this dash cam footage from the rides you took on September 24th? Rather than let me know the one ride of the accusation, they gave me four rides to choose from. I know where all of these passengers live in theory, right? I can go to the dash cam, I can go through my travel history on Google Maps, and I, I could find out all of that information. So if someone accuses me of doing something, whether falsely or non-falsely, a horrible person might seek retaliation. And I, I don't condone that and I would never do that. So I understand why they're giving us a few different rides to pick from so that we can never really truly know who it was unless the accusation wasn't a lie. So I don't fault Lyft for doing this, like, you know, having different rides to go from. I do fault them for how long they took to get back to me. Three days is too long. Like if you're gonna deactivate me, you need to come prepared with your reasons, like immediately. Here's how I was able to respond to Lyft. Because I was in Vegas and my dash cam footage was stored on my computer back home, I didn't have the footage in Vegas to actually send to them. So I had to go to a friend, give him the code to my house, to come into my house, to go into my database on my computer, and then upload those clips to the internet so that I can access them while I'm in Vegas. So here's the email I replied back two days later. It took me some time to get the videos uploaded and then downloaded since I'm on vacation in Vegas and the footage was at my home. I uploaded my last four rides to YouTube and set it to private. Only people with the link can see it and I would delete it right after this is resolved. So in order to save us some time, there's actually two videos where there's just absolutely nothing going on. I say hi to them when they get into the car and I wish them a great day when they get out of my car and there's just nothing crazy going on. So we're not even gonna go through those videos. We're gonna go through the two most likely culprits. And I think that those two videos are equally plausible for being one of the people who reported me. I consider one to be valid with a huge amount of stretch. Like I think it might've been a misunderstanding. And the other one I think is just someone who's broke trying to ruin my life because they don't want to pay for their ride. Let's see if you can figure out which is which. Hey, I'm in front of building 11. Okay, I'll find you. With this first passenger, which we'll call passenger number one, it was at an apartment complex and the pin didn't correspond to where her actual apartment was, which is fine. It happens all the time, whatever. So I gave her a quick call. Uh, she told me where she was and I told her I would come and find her. Off to a good start. Hey, you're right. So the first thing you notice is I confirmed the name, even though I know that this person is clearly not the woman name that I just asked if he was, but people order rides for other people all the time. Still, everything looks pretty, you know, straightforward. During the middle of the ride, he actually starts to change his behavior. He starts to search for something. He realizes whatever he can't find can't be found. And then he ends up calling the person who ordered the ride for him. So it's really hard to hear him speak, but 
pretty much he had left about 820s at his home and he was asking her to find it. I'm assuming, straight assumptions, I will admit, that he wanted to use some of this cash to pay her back for the ride for getting him home. However, one of two things happens. She can't find the money. So she either lied to him and took the money or the money was actually misplaced. And regardless of which of those two options, I think that that could lead to her creating a false report on me so that she doesn't have to pay for the ride. The rest of this ride goes pretty smoothly. He gets out my car without me locking him in. And I don't say anything more to him except, hey, have a great day. So there's nothing inappropriate happening here either. But there might be something inappropriate that happened during my next ride. Let's check it out. So this ride was actually the last ride of the night, which makes it even more probable that this could be why I got banned. And I, I said something to her that I can understand why it might be misinterpreted. Take a listen. So I just started doodling on... You right? Yeah. And all my friends Good morning. I'm so glad you're taking close to my home. You are my last delivery. Okay. I can see how this might be interpreted wrong, right? So she gets in, I confirm the name as I always do, and then I told her that I'm so happy that she's taking me close to my home because she's my last ride of the night. I can understand in some weird world why this coming from a stranger who you don't know, who has a level of power over you, because I have control over the car, could be misconstrued as something inappropriate right so I, I can i can i can see it but it's a huge stretch huge stretch i would rather believe that this was a miscommunication that led to my deactivation rather than believing that some girl just wanted a free ride but let's check out the rest of the ride because we were actually deactivated for two reasons one was being inappropriate and two was for locking them in my car we'll see if i do that here and if I don't, it will make me think that it was the first video. So let's check it out. All right, so I start to pull in. She takes her seatbelt off. All right, have a good day. Tell her to have a good day. She gets out immediately. Let's assume it was rider number one. You have to be a disgusting human to put someone's job at risk because you are too broke to pay for your own ride. And then on top of that, to make the accusation, the false accusation, of a sexual nature. So here's my message to whoever reported me. If you are too broke to pay for a ride, all you have to do is check out my video on how to make $500 in one day with Lyft. And then maybe you will never have to report someone else ever again falsely.